get started. All right, at this point, I'd like to start meeting with the president's report. Mr. Starks, our president, is not here this evening. Uh, he extends his apologies for missing tonight's meeting. He is obligated to attend, to attend a Miller Township meeting, which he is on the board of commissioners for that. That's the board. Uh, we have had several questions come to us in the community forum. We answer these questions as quickly as possible. Some questions require research and may take a bit more time than others. But we do, we do respond as quickly as possible. And we import, encourage you to use this resource to get your questions answered. If you read through the questions and answers already posted, you will find a great deal of information. If we do not understand and do not fully answer your questions, please ask again. We will do our best to answer all questions from any and all HBL members. During the July meeting, it came to your attention that the HBL POA Board of Directors had been referred to the Indiana State Attorney General's Office for supposedly missing funds. As mentioned, our attorney has asked that we do not discuss this. However, I can tell you once again that we gathered all the information that was presented to you in our May and June meeting, along with our outside auditor's reports, copies of the echoes, et cetera, and sent them, sent them to the state attorney general. We have confirmed that those items were received, but we have not been advised as to what the next step may be. Once we are advised, we will share this information with you. I'm sorry, but we cannot take questions on this issue until it has been resolved. I will also mention that as soon as this current board was established, your treasurer, Jeff Fuel, asked that we work together to limit spending and immediately began to research how to better recognize and communicate our current financial condition. The result is how his report is currently being structured, and he is continuing to work on improving all aspects of our finances. Thank you, Jeff. On another subject, an auxiliary hood bed is located on the front of Willie's Restaurant Roots, and it has been brought up in this meeting because it looks pretty terrible. Steve at Willie's has offered the following information. He contracted a company to inspect and repair the vent as necessary. They were told to contact Steve so that he could be present during the cleaning and inspection. They did not have that did not happen, and it appears they serviced the wrong vent by mistake. <laughs> now, that is kind of fun. The cleaning and repair is scheduled, but still in prospect. The same people also do HPAC and are probably backed up on AC calls. Once the repair is complete, the shingles are on hand and will be replaced. For additional information, Steve tells us the roof set and roof have been seen and inspected by the Board of Health and the Greendale Fire Department. Neither had any issues with it as a fire or safety issue. The Willie's annual fire inspection comes from the Department of Homeland Security and was completed on August the 1st of this year. Once again, there were zero issues there. Willie's has a cleaning company that cleans the inside of the hood system portable, and they were just there within the last few weeks. On another subject, we apologize to those of you who have incurred road damage over a long period of time. We are trying to get these issues corrected as the fiber insulation teams complete their work. We recently repaired Longview Drive near the intersection of Alpine. Concerning the smaller streets where there are still issues, we have not forgotten and plan to repair those as soon as possible after the fiber work is completed in those areas. If you are aware of any issues with our roads, please use Quick Fix app to photograph and send pictures with the location. And if you have questions, please use the community forum. Thank you for your attention, and I hope to see you all at the September meeting. Robert Starks.
All right, at this point, Jeff, would you like to uh, give a treasure to the Yeah, thank you, Ken. Uh, okay, so these figures are going to be rounded off to the nearest dollars. Uh, Cat position is of June 30th of 2023, $237,451. Cat position uh, is of July 31st, 2023, $721,619. And I mean, that has been three weeks away from here. I always come up and give you something within this week. I think uh, Tuesday was in figure. So as of August 23rd, 2023, the cash is right now at $984,415. Um, the end of July operating fund, which is the cash to end day business and pay will be dollars Emergency funds is 123,676. Escrow is zero. And the, the capital expenses for July was the Crystal Lake Air Raider put in. So that was 5,891. That's all I got. Thank you. All right. At this time, we have the escrow reserve future considerations. It would be road paving. Ongoing replacement of vehicles, security, maintenance, equipment, aging buildings and maintenance, erosion control, technology for all apartments. Uh, note that all amounts are, are rounded to the nearest dollar. HVL PLA plans annually for a balanced budget. Annual expenses are planned not to exceed anticipated annual income. Some of the frequent expenses are predictable, such as replacement of vehicles, maintenance of our roads, many lake dams, swimming pool liner, lake dredging, etc. Funds are reserved each year to cover these future expenses and are included in the total. Projected cash at year end is generally equal to zero dollars plus reserve funds for above mentioned expenses as well as necessary reserves. Reserves include two months of operating capital, capital for asset purchases, and architectural bond payments to be refunded. All finances will be audited by an outsider auditor annually. Any questions on that? Yes, Wayne, please, yeah. uh, anyone given up after the question with your overhead microphone, you don't need to hold on, please give us your lot number and name. Okay. So it's Ken, uh, let's see, Wayne Meyer, lot 2214. That note that you have on the board there, where can we find that? That's also in the agenda. In the agenda. Okay, but where, where, where is it at? I mean, it's a nice definition. Is it at? Where is it, it in the a, is it in your operating manual? Is it in the bylaws? No. I no. I I don't know that answer. So again, we can look that up. Thank you. I was just thinking because it's a nice definition that we could use to really. Well, I mean, that's, that's, that's basically what we put at every meeting. That right. is part of the. Uh, okay. I want to read it. I said, "Is it with this?" You know. And the agenda is definitely a part of. Me. Yes. Oh, well, you know, I, I'll do. I'll do my question off later on. Oh, thank you. Yeah. No problem. Okay. Anyone else, please? All right, uh, Donald. Secretary's report, please. I would like to ask for a motion to approve the July 2023 um, board minute board meeting oh. minutes. Thank you. All in favor? I would like to say something about that. Yes, sir. The, the, the your name and your number. Alpha 1604. There, there is nothing in the minutes about people that brought up uh, suggestions, made uh, things about things that may not look right. There, there is nothing about anybody that brought anything up. Contrary to what the board like. Well, it, was it on the audio? 
We uh, we summarize these minutes. We do not do words by words. Your audio, you couldn't understand hardly anything. I know we did have problems last. So time. therefore, I think it should be in ten minutes. So so people are aware of what's taking place. No, we we will yeah. take that under consideration. We will right, going forward. We can't. But the audio is not. But you can't approve these if they're if they're changing. Mm -hmm. We can't change these because we don't have any other information. I think they're sending there a caveat. Notes? Yeah. Then we can make a caveat on the notes on on the minutes. Yes, that there the audio was not that Again, that we have those. Board members motion to approve. What? Uh, uh, I we, I think it was. Uh, Okay, nothing about what you guys are talking about. When more than one person talks, people online can't hear. So make sure that you do not talk over each other. I'm getting feedback that when multiple, multiple people talk, they can't hear. So please, please keep that in mind. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Western, community manager, who's been here at this time. Good evening, everyone. First, I'd like to start off with a request to. Um, have uh, to approve the annual beer call. Uh, this year it will be following the standard archery season of October 1st through January the 7th. Thank you. I asked the question. Do that hanging on. We have to do it. We have to at least put a, uh, a motion for a ready start off. I'll second it. Okay. Just a quick question. Um, your your name and your name, Julie Hewitson, and according to the bylaws, I don't think I have to give bylaws. Um, <laughs> um, I was in charge of the task force that brought the call to the community. You know, some people are, it's controversial if people like it or not. Uh, the deer have, have multiplied to the point where I think this, this is very valid. We need to do it. There's deer getting sick in people's yards. Mm -hmm. um, I hope people understand that I love animals. It's and it's and I really think we need to do it in a, a more aggressive way this year. I also think we haven't had a, a flyover in six years, according. No, we had a flyover. According to what my twenty twenty one. Okay, there it's not it's not in your records. One out of the last six. Okay, one out of the last six. Okay, I, I really think this year it's it's kind of imperative so we can see where we're at on that you know, deer population so we can monitor how many, I mean, 50 deer may not be enough. So I think the first snow, we probably ought to have a contracted flyover company. I know it's like $600. They're, they're on the go and ready. Okay, okay, okay. So, okay. Let's see uh, you have them ready to go. All right. I will the last years. few years, they haven't reached 50, though, with all the active well, people doing it. Have, have, the number of things? Yeah. If we put out a, a, a call to um, have archers come in, maybe from other parts of the, the county, you know. We didn't have more archers coming in this year. This is from the qualification. Okay, right. So we will have more this year. Yeah, I know you qualify them, uh, and I the, think that's a great idea. The, the uh, Flyover is not necessarily going to give us the best numbers. Uh, that's the issue we ran into in 2021, if you remember. I think we discussed it. I right think, I think they're the, um, uh, so what, well, we've got the same thing. We've got a lot of anecdotal information. Uh, since 2021, we've, uh, the security has been letting us know kind of the, the rough idea. We've also asked residents to give us that information. The deer call hunters themselves have been asked to, you know, if they do call one deer, how many other deer did they see at that time? Right. Those kinds of things to try to get a better handle on the number. Because every doe has at least two fawns every year. Not necessarily. That make a comment here, Dave. I said yeah. that you know, I, I do want folks to know that this did come up, and, I, and I'd be curious to hear folks' opinion at some point. It's not free to do a flyover. Does anyone think that the deer population is lower? <laughs> Did that call for the in my yard? That depends on the time. time. Well, so I have all that the financial condition. Get an audio. We all know the financial condition that we're in. Do you want us to spend money flying equipment in the air to kill no. deer? No. no. 
And to the card, you want to add to the Yes, sir. For the last two years, the call number has gone down. Yeah. Yeah. You yes. think maybe that's because it was last year? Mm -hmm. I, I drive a lot around here, and I've never I've seen nothing else here. I've never seen a big uh, sick deer in my yard or anybody else. I, I don't think the reason for the call is from sick deer, but for this overall population of them. Yeah. 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 Well, what I'm saying is your numbers are going down. Numbers are down. We're way over what is allowed in this, what should be in this area. We should never even come close to that. And so we're not worried about trying to get down to the super low number, but we're still probably close to double. Sir, do you have a question? Yeah. Name and lot number, please. I don't really have a question, but I have a super problem. Yes, sir. I'd like to bring up the next. I live on Steel Crest. Right. And right after I moved in this community, probably was six years ago, seven years ago, there was a gentleman that pulled up in a pickup truck right here by Cathy Lake, got out of his truck, brought back his boat to shoot a deer that had just crossed the road toward the green space, but the deer hadn't quite made it into the green space. I have to move him. I laid in the hospital while I was a young man. From the young man that got shot by an arrow that went through his stomach and out of the back. He's been in the hospital for 200 days. I'm taking my leave right now. That concerned me. So I don't know how you qualify these folks to come in here and hunt. I understand what you're told. My part of it is the safety of the That's going to, that's not my fault. I haven't been my whole life. Both ways. Young man and buddy. That's not that's not good. Well, no, you're absolutely you're gonna get anywhere from there from across the river. So that's my concern. I I don't you're absolutely correct to say hey, if you see something falls on it, you spoke to the right one at a time that I would have been a very upset kid for keeping these step up. Very I was upset that point. I went to find the sheriff's, but that's that's yeah. my piece. Well, I appreciate your, your eyes on it and let us know what you see in there. I was kind of you know, off, and I'm just saying that's that's concerning. Appreciate it. Ma'am, what do you have? I'm on a green belt. And I agree with this man on the stage because I've been hunting since I've been a little girl. Yeah. And when you're in doing archery, you, you don't shoot unless you're for sure. And you never shoot out of open water. To me, if you're going to hunt, you need to be a resident, number one. Yeah. Number two, you need to be able to pass the archery test and all the education. You have to know about it. If you can't get your deer, what are you going to do with it in a hollow behind you? If you have green woods behind you and nothing else, and they're not building them like my house. So, to me, safety is number one, but also control, deer control is what it's about. It's not always about slaughter or any of the other. Right. That's all I have. And I appreciate that. Mr. Wiston, our manager, he, he manages the deer call, he's very on top of it. The people really aren't out there just willy nilly just shooting arrows everywhere they can. It just really is an organized activity. You're going to have, hopefully, not errors, but like the gentleman there said, that that, that guy's been doing that. Right. So they uh, keep your eyes open, but we are on, Dave is on top of it and he does manage it. And it's a necessary event here. So, just so you're clear, the rules are. Clearly defined in the bylaw. And this was a lengthy process. They did a lot of study and a lot of uh, a lot of work went into setting this up. So we're following the same same rules they, they've had for many years. A lot of the hunters are have been here for a long time. So this is not this is not their first. Another question, are they using crossbows or are they using compounds? We do have a See, I don't agree with that. 
Mr. Ken Carr, another question. Yeah, that's all right. All right. So, so again, you're going to have to give your lot number because we are trying to catch everything. You said the last one? Ken Carr, 2679, I think. <laughs> How much do we spend a year on corn? And is it legal? Because it's not legal in Indiana to pay. We, we don't pay them at all. We can't pay them. You've never given out corn to PLA? I don't pay all right. Um, well, Jeff, first of this motion, I second it. Board members, would you like to vote on approving the deer call? Yeah. Aye. 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 That motion carries four to zero, please. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, and thank you for the question. That's something that. Uh, you know, we don't usually have groups this large. It's great to hear from everyone. Great to hear that you reported your incident. Uh, good to hear, you know, other objections. And, and I've taken notes for that. So, uh, the golf course report uh, the weather continues to be friendly to the golfers around or exceeding previous years. Still in a summer period that it's uh, opening at seven in the morning at the golf course. Uh, the office is going to be closed uh, here at the POA on Monday, September 4th for Labor Day. Uh, fiber optics, uh, SEI, uh, REMC has begun installing fiber in homes. Uh, they, they've uh, started contracts uh, or started setting up the season. I think contracts is not the word. Uh, the project to install the main lines continues as well as the uh, restoration of yards and uh, at this point the re restoration is not a final restoration uh, the first restoration is covered the levels up and this rich here has really taken this off as his project he volunteered to do this uh, as far as being your uh, your representative to the fiber Company, uh, any of the complaints we get as far as the installations and things he, he works on. He, he puts a lot of effort into it. And uh, just so you know, it, he's uh, kind of your representative to, to these companies. We've gone through several people with the various companies we deal with. There's an engineering firm called NRTC, they have the red trucks. They're not the compliance guy for mold on your house. They're it's another kind of red trip. <laughs> anyway, they do the overall engineering for the whole project. And then there's a group uh, with SEI data who are installing the actual uh, the actual uh, communications lines, the fiber optics. And REMC is, is uh, a part of that uh, coordination with SEI data. So, so, and then you have your subcontractor in your project. So, Sometimes it gets a little bit, you know, tedious for him to go find out who, who to talk to to try to get things straightened up. <laughs> On top of that, we have some of these locations that are very tricky. You know, I call them confunction junctions. I've run into maybe eight so far, and you have everything that comes together at one spot. You've got water, you got sewage, you got gas, you got. Uh, electric, you've got phone lines, you've got, you know, the fiber, fiber coming in, and those can be tricky for, for these companies to deal with. And sometimes that results uh, in uh, in a larger uh, problem with a water line that's hit or, or something like that. And it may take longer for those particular areas to be pretty straightened out. But uh, Rick does a lot of work on, on trying to manage that. Uh, once everything on the on the main line is done, we will be uh, pushing them to uh, to complete these checklists and make sure that everything's done. They're, they've made the promise to restore everything back to at least the way it was, so we're going to hold them to that promise. Uh, just so you know, uh, our maintenance team is still evaluating the yard waste project. I really, I don't know if any of you have looked at the at, at what was left after it was shredded, but it looks pretty good. Uh, we're looking at options, uh, just taking the shreddings out, 
I'm, I'm not an expert at, at that. I thought we could just take it out and start putting it on the trail and putting it on uh, in different places. That's not uh, the uh, probably the best way to utilize that. You're supposed to let it sit and go through a process of at least a year or so. We're looking at all the options that we can do with that, uh, with the product on a long-term basis. Uh, in the short term, it may be that we just have the what's uh, shredded removed from the property, clean it up. Uh, I want to go again in November and uh, have another opportunity for people to take their yard waste down, pile it up, you know, chip it up. Uh, there's a there's a delivery fee and an eight hour minimum on the equipment that we have come in. So uh, we just touched the surface with that big pile. Of, of uh, yard waste that we that we reduced for the cost, so we have some room to actually increase capacity and things like that. So we're looking into all the options. Uh, just thought for some reason uh, board day is the day that everybody comes in with all kinds of ideas, and that's kind of the 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 hardest time to get all that stuff together. But uh, today we just had several options that the game thing we were still you know looking into those things. Uh, thank you, Al. Hey. Al Hewitt from 1604. Probably 15 or 20 years ago, we bought uh, 26 acres up on State Line Road. Mm -hmm. And as far as I know, the only thing we've ever used it for is to pump some muck from the, the dredging. Would that be a good place for this? It, it may be a good place to store it temporarily. And I, I've got to look into that. that. That is one of the things we thought about. As far as us taking the yard waste there individually, I would be against that because it's uh, no, but you're, you're you're talking about you didn't really know where to go with this, right? You got 26 acres out there that have never done anything, to it. right? One of the things we have to be careful about is leaking the contents into the water system. So it's uh, and as I said, we're still looking at, at those options, yeah. Julie Mason, lot to do before. Um, I, I was down there garden yesterday and then there is a dumpster there but it says not to use it is is the thought to put the mulch in that or yes. for some other Just purpose? To remove it. okay uh, our first our first part there is to see because there, there are weight limits so they wanted us to fill up one with the mulch see how much weight that was they'll give us how much cost that is it's like 35 Thirty-five dollars a ton, or the pickup fee, then then the tonnage fee, and then we'll see if that makes sense. Uh, our goal here is to reduce the cost of what we're used to doing with the yard yeah. overall. And there is signage saying don't use it, but I'm down there a lot, and I've seen lots of people put lots of things so in it says don't do it. I haven't seen that yet on this one. Yeah. I was just hoping you would mention it here so more people know. Yes. Please do not, Please do use not that do that. that. Because I've seen it overflowing and people still throw more stuff in and say, you know, what I see and overall, the dumping sign and still so what I see overall we can we can have a pretty good system if everyone knows when it's available. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you the biggest complaint I've gotten over that yard waste dumpster is that it's always full. <laughs> and I see a lot of heads shaking in the room right now. And uh, not just full one time, but full every single time I go down there, the bank's full and it's, it's always so. So we're trying to avoid that. Right. As I said, we, we have a lot of capacity to, uh, to take in a lot of yard waste uh, at a single time. You know, and if we can get that done at maybe two times a year, spring and fall, uh, we can and, and kind of develop a pattern here. I think we can, you know, you, you can get what you want. We can uh, be able to utilize the uh, the material and and have it at a decent cost. And, and just one other um, thing, if you can clarify, I know a month, at least a few months ago, you addressed the topic of how Greendale has, where you just bring everything out to the yard and they clean it all up for you. And there's no extra cost. Can you just state that that would be very expensive here or let people know the issue with that, yeah. why we don't do that here? Yeah, that, and 
again, you know, o overall this budget thing, we talk about amenities, about, you know, what we want, things like that. And someone once told me, and we used to joke about, you know, uh, who left the dome undone on the place, you know, because it was raining or it was too hot or whatever. But, you know, you could dome the place. It would cost a lot of money. And, you know, for enough money, you could do a lot of different things. So we have to always take that into account. If, if we do projects like that, it's what well, we are committed to uh, have a project cost laid out. Everyone, you know, kind of openly discuss the, the advantages and disadvantages and trying to be better uh, stewards as far as that goes because you, you can, you can do that kind of thing, but it's, it's expensive. It's, yeah. I know it's expensive for Greendale to send a couple guys around to pick up limbs and things. But like people that. don't see a cost on their bill in Greendale that says they're charging for that. But it is rolled into their cost, you know, yeah. even if people don't see it. We don't know free lunch. <laughs> and then finally, uh, the, the maintenance team has been uh, painting lines you may have seen on uh, the most critical uh, that, that we've always thought was around the dams, those big hills, things like that. We get a lot of uh, a lot of complaints that the, the sidelines, especially uh, as they fade or are uh, tough to see. So uh, the, the team has been doing that. The next step, uh, I think, uh, you've seen and uh, you've been following your listserv. They're going up uh, Lake uh, Longview and then hitting Lakeview. Uh, it's uh, we have a piece of the piece of equipment, it's something that was purchased several years ago, the little uh, motorcycle looking thing. Uh, so uh, it, the cost is in the paint, and uh, it, it's expensive. It's not it's not just river house paint or anything like that. It's got to last. For a while, it's got to last over tire growing over things like that. But uh, our our goal is to, uh, especially the main roads in here, to uh, to restripe them. So, uh, and some may ask, well, you know, we're planning on repaving and things like that. That's true, but we have to build up the funds to repave. So we figure it's not going to be next year before, you know, we're it's probably going to be 2025. We're still working on those details as well. So uh, it's it's something we've been trying to do for a couple of years between the weather and other work that we've had to, to complete. And we haven't been able to get to it, but uh, they're finally able to get to it. And we want to take advantage of the dry weather until this morning. <laughs> Our little surprise we had this morning was uh, in the plant. But, uh, any other questions? I have one comment, Dave. Yes. You mentioned the paint is very expensive. Relative to paint, yes. It is not expensive to paint these lines. You know, don't, don't go away yeah. thinking that, you know, we already own the equipment. We're going to make paint. This is not a big expense relative to the budget. Dave, <laughs> did you touch on safety? I did not. Can I please do so? Yes. If I can approach the podium. Sir, again. Insider, 725. Thank you. Thank you. Last month at the meeting, I announced that was the actual first meeting I attended in the 15 years I lived here. I came here because I had heard what had gone on in the meeting prior. And I felt it was partly my responsibility too that maybe things have gone astray. Last month, I made a proposal that we eliminate our security and save well over $400,000. I don't think it was received very well. In the last month, we've been doing a lot of checking into things, investigating. Tim Gallagher and myself, we have over 50 years of law enforcement. We spent two hours yesterday with the chair and also the chief deputy here from the county. The deputies that we have working for us right now and the security is a severe liability. And 
four months ago, maybe five months ago, we had a guardian angel riding with one of our security people. And I will explain. I can't provide the name. I cannot provide the address. And out of respect to Mr. Day here, he's not allowed to talk about it. Our security deputy was in one of our vehicles, our security. He was in his uniform. He was carrying a gun. He responded to an incident in the valley, which involved the fire department. While talking to the firemen, they determined that he had been drinking. Dearborn County Sheriff's would call him. He was so intoxicated that they had to transport him to a hospital. They did not transport him to jail. He since has been charged with two counts of ODI. He has been let go from the valley. Again, somebody was riding with him that night. And he struck a car head on going down State Line Road, which they do all the time. He killed maybe a family of four in himself. What kind of liability is that? How much is a child worth? How much is a mother worth? If you're talking $20 million, that's $10,000 per homeowner. That's a heck of an assessment. Our security people aren't sure they want to do a good job. I know one person. He is retired to himself. But these guys are old. They aren't getting their additional training. And there isn't a whole lot that goes on with it. Okay? In the echoes that was put out on the uh, internet, Bob had several questions that was asked of him. And one of the questions was, was the liability of our security and also of our deputies. He claims we have secure, uh, we have liability for our security. I don't know what the cost of it is or how much we have. That might be a million dollars, it might be 10 million, I don't know. But he also stated at that time that the three police officers from West Harrison, that we were covered under West Harrison's liability. The last two days, I have been on the phone and emails the West Harrison town. It's a small town, less than a quarter mile square. They have three deputies, which we've been fully here full time. They work less than 36 hours. That's all they patrol that town is 36 hours, 6 p.m. to 12 midnight. Of the two uh, council people that I got a hold of, uh, one was the clerk and treasurer. Their liability does not cover Hidden Valley. And Bob said they did. Now, I don't know. Maybe Bob was given wrong information. He's not here tonight. I'm not going to condemn the man. But right now, unless Dave tells me we have some other police department or agency covering us, we have no liabilities for these deputies. If they go out tomorrow and injure somebody or shoot somebody, God forbid, we are liable in a multi-million dollar lawsuit. The proposal that I'm proposing was drafted between myself, Tim Gallagher, and uh, HR person, Sarah, and uh, Julie, and a lot of other people that were concerned about what's going on. Can I interrupt you? Yes, sir. How long a presentation do you have? I'm going to give you five more minutes, and that's it. Okay. I'll give you four minutes. Because they, you're going to present a presentation on how to fix our security for the situation. I'm going to tell you what my proposal was. Yeah. What you need to do, and I'm not being flippant or, you know, trying to flip you off. I mean, we set up here on a committee structure. Yes. If you have a security proposal, you really need to go to the State Safety and Security Committee and start well, there. What is, you, I know you don't want to. Well, but that's the awesome. system we have set up. Let him talk. Let him talk. I feel. He's now, he's not not thing. I love the volunteers. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. But when you have a safety committee made up of people that are not security people, they're not police, they're not fire, they're not dispatcher. How do they? How do they analyze our security? They can't. 
It's great that they want to volunteer, but they have no history, no background. We had a police officer on that committee got frustrated and quit. This is I, this started to be a financial thing, which should have went to finance, but now it's a liability. And I don't think we have a liability committee, and that's why I think these people on the board, with respect, should take action on this. If one of those policemen tomorrow injures somebody, we aren't covered. And I'm not hearing Dave say anything otherwise. I'm going to re respond here. Okay. I've got, like I said, two council people that have said their liability is on us. A $20 million lawsuit, roughly $10,000 per family. As we talked to the sheriff yesterday, I sort of, sort of outlined what I wanted to do or what I was suggesting to do. Eliminate our security department. Let Dearborn County cover us. Okay. If we have an event of fireworks, Fourth of July events, Halloween, where they need protection for the road, the city manager can hire off duty deputies. Dearborn County, Lawrenceburg, Greenberg would be happy enough to provide us with off duty deputies. He would guide them as far as where we want them and what them to do. We pay them an hourly wage, we don't pay tax. There's your check. You're responsible for your own taxes. The boat patrol, the community guy that drives around, checks the properties, that would still all be the same. And the community guy, compliance guy, could actually be the one to do vacation inspections of vacation homes. If we have to hire an additional guy to do it, fine. The equipment, the cars, especially the ones with rangers on it, would be the equipment would be taken down and sold. The two security vehicles, we save for administration. If, Dave, if Ken Horn has to go somewhere or if Dave Westman has to go somewhere, they have an administrative car to drive. The fifth one that we hit on here was Dearborn County running radar. This is our only problem. Dearborn County cannot run radar on our streets. We are a private entity. The streets are private. So we aren't going to give our streets to Dearborn County. I would not even say that. <clears throat> as far as the, um, the shack, the deputy shack, I would want to turn that over to Dearborn County as a substation. And he was pretty excited about that because he said that officers on this side of the county could use this. And they had in the past, back in 15 years, 15 years ago, when we actually had deputies. They would come in and sit there and do reports. Very visible to everybody. So this is basically what we're saying, is what we need to do. We can save about $400,000. You keep $100,000 in the budget and uh, for hiring off-duty deputies. Our camera system, we have a great camera system already set up. We don't need anything else with cameras. That's another thing. I just had to throw that in. I apologize. So that's all I have to say. Any questions? Sir, we can't answer any questions at this point. Okay. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Okay, so I should clarify something. I'm kind of scared of a lot of things said here. Number one, as far as the liability goes, uh, we have liability insurance on our security portion of the team. So the security side, the non-law enforcement side, we have liability insurance. We always have, but we increase those who uh, have weapons. We have uh, our, our officers uh, that are police officers that left pairs, but they are, we had to identify them to our insurance company. We pay a little bit extra for that liability. Uh, and that, that happened as a result of our this craziness that we've been in with uh, losing the deputy status with a lot of our people. We do have one uh, deputy that's still on our staff for our time, being the school resource officer. Uh, sometimes they'll use the truck that's the sheriff's department of trucks. Sometimes he has his own vehicle that is assigned to him by the sheriff's department. Uh, As far as the, the one security officer uh, that went through the unfortunate thing, Andy, just to be honest, um, 
What department did you work for? I was Hamilton County Rangers. Hamilton County. Hamilton County Rangers. Okay, so has, did they ever have a DUI police officer? During, while working? While working. <laughs> Not that I'm aware of. I mean, it's something that does happen. I mean, I've been, I, I lived in, I might have one particular because I grew up in the department. Uh, that's not totally uncommon. I know it's a little fatty life. Wow, but the guy. You know, any department has that. So we we try to do what we can. Uh, so that can happen anyway. Yeah, natural. Just let me finish that. So as far as the additional training, uh, our guys do receive at least 24 hours a year additional training. It's training that we send them to the Indiana Marshals uh, Conference. Uh, we've done that for many years. Uh, they are trained there by Indiana Academy, Indiana Academy instructors, people that teach at the police academy in Plainfield, Indiana. One of the great things about the Indiana Marshals Conference very inexpensive training on top of that. We also, and these guys, uh, the ones that are uh, police officers in West Harrison have a responsibility to get at least that training uh, on top of their academy training. So uh, their regular police academy training. So that's the annual, <clears throat> annual training. And there, there's more training that's done uh, as well. Uh, And so that's the the liability thing. We do have liability insurance. Okay. So as far as the West Harrison liability, we we had a situation where our guys that worked for West Harrison were working for us in an off-duty capacity. Exactly what you were saying about Lawrenceburg, Greendale, Harris Department, working here as an off-duty officer. Okay. When they work in that capacity, they are covered. When they do police work, they're covered by that police department's insurance. So we had an, an, an issue where that actually happened. One of our West Harrison guys, West, West Harrison uniform, everything else, was working as an off duty officer. He had, you know, he had discussed it with their attorney and everything else, but he had a traffic stop. And this traffic stop turned into a guy running away from him because he was going. At that point, he becomes a police officer. As a police officer in Indiana, 24-7, if you run into some kind of a some kind of a crime, act criminal activity, something like that, you have an obligation to interject yourself. You are considered a police officer 24 7. And that was a situation there where he faced down this person. Uh, the person somehow claimed that he had some kind of an injury. Uh, but he was arrested. He was taken to jail. He had a warrant for his arrest. So at that point, uh, our sheriff went and talked to uh, the prosecutor, went and talked to uh, West Harrison people. And at that time, they shut that down. Our guys are no longer able to work off duty for in Valley It was one incident at the very beginning of even trying the project. So very frustrating, I can tell you from my standpoint, because I thought we had something that we could work. So um, since that time, all of our officers wear a security uniform. They drive a ranger vehicle, they drive a security vehicle, and we have not been doing traffic stops because those are problems when you're not a police officer, when you are you don't have a police car. Or at, at this meeting with the sheriff and prosecutor, I think I reported before, they said, we don't want you using red lights and red and blue lights anymore in your police car. Something we've done even before they were deputies. Uh, but that's, that's the situation we're in. So we get to the proposal. Uh, it's interesting that, that the sheriff talked about uh, the sheriff's department covering. That was one of the options that we tried early on with all this. Uh, we tried to get deputies, full-time deputies, to work for us part-time. That time, they were paid $35 an hour. We had um, two or three that covered shifts. 
Uh, and we basically, there was no more interest in that. We had a lot of open shifts. They went uncovered because we couldn't get, get the help there. Uh, we, uh, the uh, uh, off duty officers from other police departments, we did not go down that road because we didn't want to offend the sheriff's department. The thing you got to understand here, and we're, we would fight this with West Harrison. That was kind of a, is that ever going to happen anyway? A police department's not going to accept that liability if they don't have to. So if, if they think about it, if Greendale or Lawrenceburg or Dillsburg or Mooresville, West Harrison, any of those think about it, what's their, what's, what's in it for them to have an officer up here certified under their department? They pay for the insurance on that person if they do something like this. What you say for off duty? For off duty. You see what I'm saying? So for the sheriff's department, it makes sense because this is part of the sheriff's territory. You know, the Lawrenceburg doesn't. They don't have anything to gain here. So if if they come into a situation and their police officer who's off duty claims, okay, I made an arrest and, and now there's a lawsuit, then that's going to be an issue for that department. They're not going to continue to send officers up here because they're afraid of the liability situation. If the ones that benefit are the sheriff's department. So we had problems with the sheriff's department helping us cover at $35 an hour anyway. I went down that road and we went a month very light. Uh, so then we even looked at it at a later date at trying to get the sheriff's department to come in. And by then they had raised the rate to $45 now. And we found out, as Andy found out, that these officers are not even going to stop a car during that time. We're going to pay them $45 an hour. Hold it. You're yeah. not paying them. We're not paying them out of our budget. I'm what sorry. I'm sorry. This no, has to be said. No, sir. You're not allowed to <laughs> I wouldn't be interested where who's going to pay it. We're not. To, you're they're going to be more time to get these in here. We aren't going to pay them. The off duty thing was just on the special holidays. Right. But yeah. said the off duty thing was just on special holidays as Off duty was just special things. Right. Okay. Fire All right. I'll have you that. Let's say you finish this. So yes, please. Ask yes. so, uh, I will ask you another question. I'll, I'll ask you another question. Did he have to say how short his department is on that at this time? He said right now, four during the day and the supervisor running. He said if they get to a certain point, he said him or even the chief deputy would come out and patrol. Okay. But they're running four and a supervisor. So that's five. Through the whole county. The whole county. Through the whole county. Now, how many... Uh, no, they don't control here because they don't want to be in here. They don't want to be associated with our, our with our police. Okay, so the question then is four four deputies. Now I'm telling you, I retired from that department. And the numbers aren't much better than you know, like nine years ago. To see four deputies on duty at a time would be I'm sorry, I don't see it. What can ours do now? So these deputies have to cover an entire county. This county goes all the way to Dillsburg, all the way north to St. Leon. You guys know where East Central is. Julia, uh, Julia's back. I patrol. I put on over 250 miles a night when, when I patrol. I can tell you, and, and I had recent experience because nine years ago, I I was working the patrol shifts all the time, and I was going from call to call. So if you're, if, if there's a thought that you can get patrol, and that's when we had a full component of the deputies here. So I, I, I challenge that. Uh, so my this the shack the substation thing. The shack or the security center has been calling. As 
the uh, door system controls, there's a badge that you enter into with, was installed by the sheriff department. All their guys have access to that building. It has radio capacity. It has the same computer system. They can do all their reports on it. Uh, there's, there's nothing that would be different than now. I don't know why, and I know some of them that use it. It's always been considered a field office or substation for the sheriff's department. We created that agreement back when I was still sheriff. So nothing has changed there, at least on our end. I don't know about the sheriff's office. The final thing that I, I would say is this is, it's all well and good. It's that way you can save a lot of money and all that kind of thing. But even in this room, how many would you say is in this room? 500 people? Yeah, 500 people in this room? 500 people. So this is something, in my view, and, and I will fight for this part, not necessarily because I'm married to security, but because I think it's the right thing. It would have to be a community vote to do anything different than what we've had in the So, Julie, you've had your hand. Now, wait, Julie, babe. Actually, this young lady has yeah. had her hand on the last bit of the way. You've been talking about it. Well, can you have your name? Maybe in your summer time. Maybe in your summer time.
I think you have some things confused. I was sure it would be like, I don't That's what I'm trying to That's what I'm trying to, to clarify. Is, uh, he, he was actually at a reserve at West Harrison. This officer was, so he did have police power. The thing is, Subdivision up, up towards Paris or towards Bright, and Bright don't have police officers, right? Yeah. They don't have their own police officers. My question is why are we 
in need of our very own deputies when we have Dearborn County and they service Sugar Ridge, Sugar Ridge was the other one, I'm sorry, Sugar Ridge, Valley Woods, and, and Woodland Estates. Why why do we need our own special people? Well, Valley Woods is actually the green district. Okay. So they're, they're controlled by the state. I, I understand that, but uh, why? So they're they're taken care of. So why do we? Many years ago, that decision was made by whoever in the PO really early on. Can that be re. re uh, yeah, that's why I say it should be a community vote. I think it should be. People have come to an expectation. Uh, you know, any of your amenities, that's kind of an amenity to have extra. Really? Yeah, it's a half a million dollars. Uh, you know, if you want to uh, to shut those things down, you should, uh, you know, it's, it should be something that community votes say. Tim, I think you had your hand up. Yeah. Tim? Yeah. yeah, I did. Uh, first of all, I'm correct. I'm going to be the safety and security. Thank you. And somebody said, I don't have to give my pocket, but I don't care. Anyway. The safety of stand on the committee, I was on that. So if you're referring people, if you're referring people to go to the safety and security committee, you're not going to do any good. I was on it for quite some time. Everything I try to suggest, since I do have a background in security and safety, I was a cop for a long time. I was an FBI employee also before that. So nobody wanted to listen to me. Who are you in this room? You got a call. You need some help. Are you going to call the security people here who can't do a damn thing? Or are you going to call the police? You're going to call 911 if you need help. That's what we're paying taxes for. The sheriff is here with his deputies to help us. That's who patrols everything else around Dickinson County. Like you said, Julie. Nobody else has private security. Sugar Ridge is a nice community. They got a golf course a little bit. They don't have their own security. We do, but they can't do anything. They're not allowed to pull you over. So if, if security's behind you and they're putting on a yellow light, keep going. <laughs> they do have authority with that here. It's a right of community, a POA sticker. Yeah. Okay. They, got, they can stop you. And they should call Dearborn County. They've got no right to stop yes, you. Yes. Really? Uh, this is a private community. These are private roads that you own. Okay. It's and they're able to free you. Oh, we, um, we tried to get into the board meeting tonight that's before this meeting. We were refused. So I understand there's some kind of POA law or whatever that says we are allowed to come into the private meeting that you guys have before this. Talk to Mr. Jack. That was our executive meeting. There was an agenda for that. We did have guests there tonight. We had two guests there that were there on appeal of the judicial and an architecture. They were on our agenda. We gave them each 15 minutes of time. If you would have requested an executive meeting to be on the agenda, you would have been given 15 minutes also. Okay, well, I haven't lived here that long. I don't know. All right, well, then, don't act like you can put your with, sir. All right, sir. That's the first one at time. Uh, we have an agenda that we have to keep. Okay. Uh, that's all I want to know. That's fine. Yeah, you know, and I appreciate what you guys do because you're all volunteers just like I was in the state yeah. committee. But I, I finally realized I was wasting my time and I'd rather have a beer and spend time with my wife than, than waste my time. And you guys, yeah, I, I did you. You got a background in IT. So you're in charge of finances. Wow, that's a hell of a process. All right, that's a hell of a process. Uh, we have another gentleman that had a question. Here. You guys need to know, if you live here, you've got a right to vote on it. Are not these guys driving around? Fine. Right. I'm going to size you. Know, everybody that lives here knows what the hell's going on. Okay, right. you're sad. <laughs> if you have something on the special And Graham, thank you. I guess at the end of the day, uh, I think it's also like what I heard. It makes sense, and I don't hear anything to the contrary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I would think that the board would want to take something like that and not stick it in safety because, quite frankly, uh, we've called for help with dogs that want to run, you know, want to chase you down the street to having our automobiles leave. Okay, so I mean, and the last time I talked to Earl, he said, I'm sorry, I was on the phone. 
I get it. It's like if we don't, if we eat, everybody else has Lawrence Park is Lawrence. But what, well, I live in Lawrence. I know my taxes are in the lower town. So I understand that I'm not paying the same amount of taxes that Lawrence Park is paying. But it, well, right, we're paying more. But apparently, now that we've got to keep piling on with all these other things, security is becoming a joke. Every kid, including my kids, thinks that we have a joke of a security. I have college kids, and now all their friends in high school, it's a joke. So we can we can say, oh, it's normal to have people that are out of shape being a security officer. Because my wife says, and I know a big guy, but I could at least run 100 yards in maybe 20, 20 seconds. <laughs> but there are some of these guys that can't. And how are they going to protect you if somebody's actually doing something in your house? First of, first of all, I'm trying to placate the rest of us by saying, you know what? Everybody gets drunk every once in a while. There's a question. We don't. We do not subscribe no. to say anybody want to say it's okay for a police no. officer to get drunk no. to no. ever no. be inebriated on the duty. That's I never said that. No. You didn't say that. You did 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 say that. If, you, well, if, you took, if, if I put it out that way, I apologize because that's not what I meant at all. I've never that? subscribed to that. I fired a police officer for, you know, doing less than that. What I'm trying to say is that it happens sometimes. And that, that, that shouldn't be it a shouldn't reflection. Happen. It shouldn't be a reflection on the entire yeah. other people. That's right. And, that, and, and it's not it's it's not, it's it's good good not good. an indictment on them, but it should be an indictment on us. So I think we somebody ought to be able to take a proposal and do something with it rather than ignoring it. And and there, it. there is a committee for that. It's called safety and security. Safety and security. Yeah. That, 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 that this is more than safety. Yeah. I'm sorry. This is more than just safety. This is this is the way. This is financial. Finance. So, sir, we work through a committee environment. That's how we get the information. They do the research. We have questions, they do more research, we, they come with us. That's how this community works, through committees. We cannot, five people cannot possibly do that without. Be able to take out. Something and that can go through the committee, and if that's where we go, it will go on about. It will go on about. Oh, it's the biggest thing, and, and kind of correct me if I'm wrong, anybody up here, because I've been here for a long time, We've gone for about eight years and been back. We're a private community. This we went through this years ago about turning this into a town. You know what? You guys both know. You know why? Because the things you lose of being a private community. Being a private community, there's a lot of things we don't get from right. our cities and stuff. Okay. Nobody so you have to decide what you want to give up. <laughs> What we really want to give up is privacy stuff. What would, you, what would we give up? Oh, no. I'm not going to have my, gonna have my, my sweet sweet. I'm not going to have my sweet sweet. Yeah. You'll pay more taxes. I, I know. Guess what? I don't know if necessarily I pay more taxes. Because when I look at no, when I look at Marksburg's, and I compare my feet, my Their homes are nothing compared to the value yeah. of your house. 15% of everything is your one county in the community alike. Look at the numbers. I will be paying more taxes. All right. Okay, we're, we're so gonna, yeah. I'm going to move on. All right. All right. Well, if you want to make more, I'll do that. Oh, you want to make more. Hey. We'll take two more questions today. We have a lot more agenda. We need to get to try to stay on time. Yeah, these are two last questions. Are they? And don't move from my point. Thank you. Hi. No. Are you, are you watching a video? Yeah. video? A meeting. It's just a meeting, Ella. Oh, go.
It has Try nothing to do, to do with kids. Ten years with Homeland Security and uh, Carrie Gunn, security players with the federal government, and I'm a confident enough person to do due diligence on anything anybody brings. I've been the chair for maybe three months, so. And who else is talking to me? Anybody else with you in the background? Why are you talking about? And what kind of background do you have, ma'am? I've been on the safety committee for over 20 years. Okay. And I've lived here for 25 years, and I know what's what in the past and i was there when we voted to be a town and there's a lot to say about being on committees for that long and the history and the other lady standing back there has been on the committee the same as myself and there's another one that's been on it for 20 okay. years do any of you women have backgrounds in this no okay so when this gentleman came fbi you live there or not he, he was a part of the committee in the past. He was there, that. Um, but, I mean, I think what we're talking about right now is specific for those who have said, I think I'm sorry about But my point is, so how is he not able to give the recommendation with the kind of background that he had? The same guy has to go through the committee. Okay, but Robert don't understand what he's trying to communicate because of their background. And I'm not trying to tell anybody, I have no police background. I don't want to be able to. But the people that do have the background and want to be on the committee, they should be able to express again. Believe me, he expressed a lot. <laughs> and nothing that was a great Nothing problem. that made any real sense. Yeah. Okay. And, 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 <laughs> Oh no, oh no. Years old ago, the security class was putting together after that plan. We need to move on with the next so I what is her name? So this seems to me to be an extremely important problem that everybody is pissed off about. And every you guys keep saying go to the safety and security committee, go to this, go to that. Somebody on the safety and security committee should get up and say, okay, we're gonna meet with you. Let's get something tonight. We'll meet if it is meeting we put our name together in the door. And only have been on the committees in this place and they don't move face. Right. 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 Not at all. Right. So they just right. not your regular goal, you know, let's get a, a dog in for the data or something like that. But this is something that's important. And so the, the safety committee needs to address it tonight. Well, and they need, not meeting tonight, no, but they can get the names of the people who want to sure. meet in their contact, and they can get together and, and come up with something. And I don't necessarily think, and I'm not knocking anybody, but if you've been on a committee for a long time, you think the old way sometimes, yeah. you need to think yeah. different. They know okay. the state, they know the safety committee's meeting. All they need to do is contact them or come to that meeting is what they need to do. They're that, trying to circumvent safety and security because they don't like that committee. Well, that's, that's what it's really about. Somebody from the safety committee, and if you're still on the safety committee, then they need to reach out to them tonight, get their names and numbers, yeah. and let them yeah. know when the next chance is. I was approaching this the other night. Hold on a minute. I was approaching this the other night, and I said, I have no problem with that. What you need to do is get the safety and security, give them a proposal to bring to the board. I was we told, the we ain't meeting with, Bonnie, please, we ain't meeting with social security because there are a bunch of old ladies that don't know shit about anything. <laughs> All right? <laughs> That's not how things get done right here. There's a problem. Yeah, I'm going to try and address it to our chance. All right? Now we're going to move on to the committee report. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
or you can, you can stop talking to me, send me an email, and you know, if we have we meet the first Tuesday every month, most of the time up here at COA posted on the calendar. If there's a of people that want to meet and we gotta do something, you know, some other time, we'll work that out. You know, just email me and we'll get it together. So I mean All right, we're gonna move on to the committee committee report. First up is Mr. Mm -hmm. Cross with the architect. Good evening. So they don't know I am Tom Cross, the architect committee. Um, to the board, we have six performance bond requests this evening for the board to consider. I will preference uh, reading them by telling you that there are zero. Dues, uh, fines, or fees that are outstanding. I'll read them all and then ask the vote to vote on them by the clock. That's fine. All right, we'll start with lot number 1183. The address is one, uh, excuse me, 517 Crest Haven Drive. Owners Brian Coleman and Shannon King. Bond amount $500. Uh, lot 637 and 638. Located at 1384 Sunset Drive, Tiber and DD Thick or Fight, I hope I pronounced that correctly, uh, bond amount $2,000. Lot number 2759 2760, uh, property located at 20818 Del Meat Drive, Paul and Margaret Joyce, uh, bond amount $2,000. Uh, lot number 2541, located at 1713 Code Circle East, uh, Donna Jansen, uh, bond amount $2,000. Lot 2074, uh, located at 1508 Raven First Drive, Donald and Jill Fielhauer, bond amount $500. And finally, uh, lot number 460, located at 20263 Longview Drive. Uh, C, J, and Holdings Incorporated, bond amount $500. I would ask the board to uh, grant these bond amounts. All right, have a motion? Yeah, yeah. Second. I will. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's all I have from the board. Does anyone have any questions for architecture? Thank you. <laughs> All right, finance committee, Kyle Packer. Is Kyle here or is someone giving this report for him? No. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, they didn't do any proof. Oh, they didn't have any proof. Okay. Future planning commission, Jan. Do you have a special point? I'm Jan Becker, and I'm with the Future Planning Committee. We have been very busy. We have a new committee member, Wayne Meyer. Welcome, Wayne. Okay. Thank you. We um, currently have five major projects that we're working on. Project number one is the Olga Convention. That's the Ohio Lakes um, Community Association. And they are going to be here. We'll be hosting their um, event on September the 13th and the 14th. We'll be presenting to this group over two days, and we'll do half hour sessions that cover Hidden Valley POA topics like communication, financial documentation, your calls, lakes management, social, um, safety security, etc. And representatives from each committee will be giving these presentations and conducting questions and answer sessions for these people. Willis is helping with meals for the group. There's no number yet on our attendees, but um, we should know the time maybe this week. Looking, we are looking for people um, who have pontoon boats that can help us with boat tours on the main lake on Wednesday evening, 9:13. These will be like the after dinner type um, trips. They'll be around start around 6:30 or 7. If you have a pontoon, we'd really appreciate your help. If you could call. Dave and um, he'll give you the details to sign up. You just need to take the group around, show them the lake, and the house, and all the different stuff. Yeah, Janice, we, I did bring it up at the LACE committee too. Oh, okay, good. good. Appreciate it. Thank you. 
So in preparation for this visit, um, we're also planning the Hidden Valley Lake Cleanup Day, and that'll be on Saturday morning, 9, 9. And uh, George is going to put the uh, information online, so you'll have to check online for the exact uh, place we meet. In the so project number two is the front entrance. Um, the task force project, um, we're currently um, finishing up a refresh of the front entrance, and the work on this is going to continue for the rest of this year. We're working on creating refresh plans for the marina, beach, pool, golf club, community center areas, lilies, and the 77 acre parks. We're going to make recommendations and they'll be presented to the board for consideration. Project number three will clearly we will help uh, with the POA CME, which is a community master plan expansion. There's a meeting plan in September to discuss this separate with George and board. Project number four, we, will, we are helping uh, Pat Hawkins, um, who has agreed to continue working with the PLA board to update current bylaws. Future planning uh, will continue to assist with this and also in creating new bylaw materials. Project number five is a communication for the sports project. There are nine different communications, nine different routes of communication for residents in Hidden Valley. They are fiber optics installation and marketing, POA website, which is WordPress, emailing network, which is MailChimp, text messaging, social media, which is Facebook, community forum, which is the POA website, Zoom meetings and communication, like Sprite, Echoes, and Hidden Valley Interests <coughs> the Design Force. That's all I have. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you very much, Janice. Appreciate it. All right. Yes. Can you repeat the finance report? People online could not hear anything was, was said. I'm, I'm not answering their questions. They could not hear what you said to finance. Finance did not meet. Therefore, there is no report. All right. Next up, Eric Fox, Lakes Committee. Okay. Hey, how you doing, Eric? It's great, Ken. How about you? All right. Uh, should be fairly quick. Uh, so, um, first reading the proposed bylaw, you know, I don't like the word changes because we didn't really make a bunch of changes. Uh, I don't want it to sound like we changed rules. We didn't. What we were doing was going through and kind of correcting some of the language that's in there so that it makes more sense, aligning rules that have been displaced from rules that are kind of like rules and putting them together so it makes more sense when you read through the report. Everything's got where it is. I don't know how we're going to do this, Pat, because there's a whole lot of... There, there, is, there is a lot. Um, yeah. Pat Hawkins, 67680. Um, a few months ago, when we did architecture, and I think it was future planning and traditional, um, I did a side-by-side -side what it used to be and what the proposed changes were, and people could not understand that. So what we've done is I sent all of the edited documents to Rich. And the changes are shown in either blue or red. And if you take a picture of that, it will take you to those bylaws and you can see how they have been cleaned up. And it's a first reading. If you have any concerns, any objections to the changes, you need to let Eric, no, and Eric, of course, will let me know since I have it on my computer at home and I'll make whatever necessary changes are. Um, but, but that is it. And Rich, are you going to send this QR code out and list of yeah. people who are not here tonight can still look at them? And as Eric said, we're not seeking anything under the radar to you. Right. We're just trying. It's like the old joke about a camel being a horse signed by a committee. These things were written over a period of years. There are things there that should be here and things there that should be here. And we're just trying to clean them up so it's easier for a normal human being who doesn't immerse themselves in this to understand. So you want to go look for what the rules are on inflatable, you know, noise and lake. Everything should be in one section for you to see. So if you look at the rule book or you look at the proposed rules, everything is highlighted in color. It is a change or it's different, so it should make sense. Again, we're not seeking anything in or out, it's just really clarifying and moving things where they make sense. Like for this 
So I don't know. So basically, this one's going to go both for the first time. Everybody gets to look at it, and then you do a second. Yeah, we got issues, and we'll address them next. Right. Yeah. All right. And this is for fishing rules, which again are separate from the, the lakes rules. Again, same same story with fishing. Need somebody to second it. Oh, you, you're going to make the motion to yes. look at the bylaws. But we just, oh, this is part three words. I'll second it. Any questions? I um, mean, again, this is kind of a broad scale project for every area of the valley. So, thank you. 2237. Sure. Question, on, uh, question on the survey that went out. Because there, there I don't know if you're going to get to it, but I just say, but there, yeah. there is a problem. With the random weight device things that aren't supposed to be on the lake, and we were out with my daughter and her husband, and yeah. I mean it's going five miles an hour with a ten foot weight behind it, completely swamps our pontoon boat, and Lake Patrol was on the other side on his phone, was driving away as this thing's just doing small donuts, just wrecking havoc and everything. So, and the survey was basically like, "Are you okay with having the weight device? So, you know, should we yeah. change it to allow it?" And, and so, just I just want to know what you know what the stats. Well, I was going to address that here on the next thing. Uh, so the lake survey, and this is what I can tell you about it. We did have a very robust response to this. Eric, can we stop for just sure. to vote about the bylaws? Oh, yeah, sorry. Okay. Okay. Yeah, All so in favor? Uh, Aye. First reading, please go read it if you yeah. want to look at it, because we're, if you want changes, please contact Eric so that next month will be the second. You'll know what they are. Right. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. I didn't we skip right away. All right, got me sidetracked. All right. All right. So uh, the lake survey. We had a very, very robust turnout on the survey. So the next step in that right now, we talked a little bit about next steps at the last lakes committee meeting. Uh, the survey closed. I think it was the Monday or the Sunday following that lakes committee meeting. Uh, so now the next step is is verifying that the people who responded to the survey are actually valid responses to the Lake Valley. Yeah. So there's a process going through that. That process is also done. Now the answer for being accepted the approval of the fourth screen. Right. So that's kind of where we're at at this point with the process. So, but I would say that if you're on the lake and you ride and a situation arises like that, you really should keep the lake control phone number in your cell phone uh, and call them and have them address that scenario quickly. Because uh, again, you okay. can't do anything if it isn't recorded and somebody yeah. is there. It was the I address. So, I get it. And, uh, and I know, I'm, you know, this is, it is what it is, guys. I mean, if they're not looking or they don't see it or what have you, I, I can't speak for the specific scenarios because I wasn't there. But that's what we would like you to do is contact the Lake Patrol and have them try to address that situation as quickly as possible. Uh, all right, moving along, uh, Moeller Park. I brought that back up. The board wanted to kind of take a look at that scenario about renting Moeller Park docks. Uh, again, the Lake Committee's recommendation is that we should begin renting those docks because it's a resource that people seem to want, and uh, we're just not making use of it at this time. So then we're going to do something. That's going to be for next year, right? That's what you're going to see it right now. We were talking about perhaps even allowing people to, you know, again, very, very reduced rate of allowing the rent. Where is Molar Park? Molar Park is uh, past the beach. I guess that would be either north or east of the beach. So as you drive up the lake, it's on the right hand side. It kind of, there's a little crook in the lake, and you'll see about six docks yeah. kind of sticking out to the shoreline. Uh, that's a POA green space property. I didn't have docks that we used to rent them, you no longer do. Because there's boats parked there now. There should be one parked there. Uh, if there are others parked there, there may be transient, but there's one person who has an agreement with the POA and leaves that space for the time being. Eric, that is on. We can address that, but we know that that's on our. Uh, and then the last thing, uh, not confirmations, but confirmations, uh, you know, we are getting in the process of setting up for the fall. We had to postpone some things like the, uh, we had an electric call for the slot fish, we had bait fish, and we had lake studies for the small lakes. Uh, so the two study, the, uh, the electric call and the, uh, the bait fish, we postponed that for the spring. So we are needing to get that uh, dates confirmed for that. We're going to try and do that sometime around October-ish. 
seems to be about the best time to get that done. Again, the call first, bait fish after that, because we want to feed the fish that we're trying not to have in place. Uh, and then after that, we're going to do the electric, call, the electric fish study of all of our small lakes, because what we would like to do is our fishing game club would like to be able to place the slot bass that currently are getting pulled out of the lake into the small lakes. Hopefully, we can generate some fisheries there that people are enjoying. Uh, and we're not just necessarily like, you know, getting rid of fish or getting rid of fish safe. You know, at some point the docks kind of were in disrepair, the steps were in disrepair. There used to be a shelter there. I don't know if you remember that. That's gone now. So it just became one of those things that at some point we felt like there might be liability issues concerning you know people using that space. But we do still have a waiting list. Well, again, the idea is uh, if somebody would like to use it, there are caveats to being able to use it, right? So there's no parking to speak of there. Uh, it is a very steep set of you know lots to get up and down, and so you need to be able to address those concerns if you'd like to have that spot. Years ago. Sure, and I'm just repeating it to say we're not really making any concessions like putting steps in. It's an as-is kind of scenario. You're going to have to accept some of the terms for that. What, what was is the cost of having this electric count thing? Well, the electric, the electric call is actually going to be paid for by the fishing game. Well, okay. This, the bait fish gets paid for out of our budget, out of the lake's budget. What is bait fish? Do bait fish is that? fish that we put in the lake to feed the bass to help the bass population grow healthy. We have a real problem in this lake. Biologists that we hire to kind of study our lake from every couple of years. We've had a problem where the, the mid-tier fish, 9 to 13 inches, which you'll hear me refer to as slot fish, are just voracious appetite fish. They eat everything, and it's at the expense of the really big fish and the really small fish that are trying to grow. So we have to address that scenario. One of the one of the conclusions we've come to is bait fish helps the big fish get what they need to continue to grow. What is the cost of that? Though? It's about $6,000. And then the studies that we do, the electric fish studies are not a regular thing. That's like every three years we do the study. That's $6,000 a year? That's 6000 for the state fish? Yeah. Yes, that's correct. Okay. And then we have the electric fish studies are, I believe, in the range of about $5,000. And that's, the, that's just to cover the people that like the fish? Well, I wouldn't say that's necessarily well, true. I think if you have a healthy ecology in the lake, it makes a big difference to your using the lake. There certainly is benefit to somebody who wants to fish, but everybody benefits from the healthy lake. Can I ask one other question well, about other bass tournaments? Yeah. Other bass tournaments? Are the only boats that go in our lakes during the bass tournaments people that have stickers on their boats from here? Yes. Are you yes. allowed? If okay. anybody's fishing in a bass tournament, though, that boat has to be a registered okay. boat. That's good. Good. Okay. And I, I thought you were going to ask me if the only boats on the lake are allowed to be bass. The answer is also. No, I, no I, <laughs> I, 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 I have a fun chance. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ken came for 2769. What is the purpose of that survey? The purpose of the survey is to kind of get a feel of the general community on what what our lake usage looks like and how we feel about the way it's being used and governed today. But I mean, it was a draft thing like wake up, right? It's a piece of it, yeah. Yeah, I just, I didn't understand why I was going to survey about something that's supposed to be illegal. The wake boat itself is not illegal. The boat is, but the yeah. use of artificial wake bankers. We can have that discussion, you know, like maybe you want to have that discussion. I, I, Right now, I'm not going to get on the road about you know what it means to read it a certain way or not a certain way. But that's kind of what we're up against right now. Is the interpretation of that rule varies depending on how you look at it. I thought our friend just no artificial. That's your read of it, yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's good. It's not everybody's read of it, and that's that's why we are where we are because the rule is kind of vague. It's not it's not specific enough. Any other questions? Thank you. Cool. Amy Air, the girls in Europe now, Park Department. 
Still here, Amy? Okay. Um, same thing for parks and rec. We just cleaned up some of the bylaws. Nothing major. I think we took off. Um, you don't have to shower anymore before you get there. You go. Uh, the health department that's required now, so not a lot of long, you won't get something. Apparently, one time that was a boarding phone, right? And that was, and we yeah, just yeah. went with it, but they got rid of it, right? I don't think so. Does it so? So, there's just little things. If anybody has any questions, feel free to contact me. All that information's on the QR code, real simple stuff. There wasn't a whole lot there. Um, the pool will go. Wait a minute. And I'll second it. Okay. That's good. I'm a favorite. The pool will close September 30th. There is lap swim 11 to 12. Um, if anybody would like to exercise, there's a lot of people doing a lot of diet and therapy at that time. Um, it will be open on the weekends, uh, 12 to 8. What we found is um, our seasons are changing a little bit, and September's pretty hot. So we're kind of limited on how long we can be open because the kids go back to school. So we're fortunate to have some kids that want to make some money on the weekends, and um, we will be open. Labor Day, they will be closing at 6 o'clock. And you can find all those hours. It'll be on the Hidden Valley website if you guys need to check, or you can call the pool, and they'll be more than happy to let you know. Um, we have Georgetown. We the Greendale Council has approved um, to do a cleanup for Georgetown Road on the seventh. Um, so that will be from nine to twelve. The experience we've had on State Line. It's hopefully we get a lot of volunteers and we will not be out there for much. Um, we didn't, we were on state line maybe a couple hours, so we were able to open up the road quickly after we got all the trash picked up. Um, so if anybody would like to volunteer, um, all the information will be on the website as well. And again, that is October 7th. Um, I talked to John Fox. He's going to let us do a little parking down there on Georgetown, and then we will park up at, I guess it'd be the golf course kind of maintenance right there at the corner of Georgetown in Fairview. Overflow can always go into the um, dog park as well. That's it for me. Unless anybody's got any questions. Mr. Gross, <laughs> you're on. Sorry, <laughs> Gary. Grossly, uh, 114 Civic Club. Hopefully, everybody now you're trying to blue out. Yes. Okay. Who attended the blue out? Cool. Appreciate all the support. Um, so, any suggestion on doing anything different? Just let us know for sure. So, a lot of you attended, but it was <laughs> different for the same time. So, time. Labor Day Bash coming up a week from Sunday. It's a free event for kids and adults. Magicians, base painting, vendors, just to just kick back in the summer. So it's right across the ball field here. Get it free. So five tailgating. Uh, we got a chili cook-off is coming off October eighth, and that's and there's going to be a Bengals game that day. So we're going to have a Getting that there on that day, probably some others as well, depending on the schedule we have that all together. So, the second annual Christmas tree lighting that was a fun event last year. Um, I thought the kids would walk around, it's going to be a kid again with lights and stuff. So, it was right here in the Zebo area. So, that's what we've got. And then, of course, the food molar dip. How many people have gone to that? So, anything, you know, any new ideas, different ideas.
concept or for events just let us know when we'll do it. The meetings are the third Tuesday at seven o'clock. So Paul, any questions? <laughs> My name is Gina Messer, who makes retreats in um, at the park, um, the ball field, the women's band room. The step is about this hot. You know, chairs can't get over it. They need to put it like a concrete system to create a bright thing built up like they did in front of that jungle with the refreshing center. You need a better ice. Yeah, or, or, so or they could buy a metal one on um, Amazon or something and just walk into the concrete. So, Mr. Winston's making notes of that as you speak. It's kind of a nice person. It's really nice. Oh, yeah. yeah. wasn't on the agenda for some reason. Stay with me or what you got for it. <laughs> Come on. Thank you, George. Uh, again, um, if you have anything safety, security related, my email address is in the uh, echo. It's hbl.wittmiller, spelled like the two leaders in the email. Give me an email and, uh, you know, we'll do what we can, you know what I mean? Um, I don't really have anything to do this month block. I'm just stating the obvious because we're still uh, awaiting feedback on that, but it's still on our agenda. Uh, election panel, you'll see that work is still ongoing. And probably uh, we'll see uh, a little more news on that next month. Uh, reminder for Halloween trick or treat that we are going to close uh, Lake View from the east full entrance to the Longview intersection for Halloween trick or treat for the safety of the kids because it's a very congested area there. Um, and reminder, if, if you're a resident and you have to get home, whatnot, if you have your ID or, or whatever, um, you will be able to pass through it. It's not close to get to your house necessarily, but please use your best discretion and caution if you are one of those exceptions. Um, so the beach, uh, I'm still working on getting a quote for that signage that we talked about last month. But in addition to that, um, I spoke with Parks and Rec, and uh, they would like to see a sign put advising no swimming off of the dock um, that's down there because they're concerned with uh, the safety. There's kids using that to swim and jump off of, and um, that's not a great situation. So uh, I would look for that sign to be added to the request once I get some good quotes together for that. So you can probably see that next one too. I think that's it. Is there another one? That's it. Uh, thank you. Sorry, you got to skip those. Not <laughs> Any new business from the floor? Yeah. I have a question. Yes, please. 1604, Julian Hewitt. I've asked this three, three months in a row. I'm going to ask it one more time. You're, you're assessing us $300. It's going to amass $617,000. Are we going to refund the emergency portion of our um, budget, the $404,000 that should have been in there and kept in there? And what are we going to do with the extra $213,000? Uh, what do you mean by are we going to refund? Um, yes, are we going to, we don't have a $404,000 emergency fund right now. Right, and you said replenish. Are we going to replenish it? Yes, 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 absolutely. Yes, okay. Yes, yes. And what is going to you're getting more than the four hundred four thousand yes. from the assessment? We'll make it simple. The four hundred four thousand will go into an emergency management fund, which is equal to two monthly right. operating right. funds. That will be in a separate account. All right. 
And is it going to be putting it put into something that yes. um will be that like a money market account? Yes. yes. Okay. And what are we going to do with the two hundred and thirteen? Two hundred and seventeen or two hundred and thirteen or that will go into the capital improvement fund, which will also be for future projects, which will also be separated, and it will be an account that you draw in for future. Okay. So it's in those are. Because I know that hasn't been done in the past. It is Correct. being done now. It okay. is being, we had three operations. Let me put it this way. No one in the past did anything egregious or no, I, I, I have never like said that. that you have. No, no, I'm just saying that rumors and things, you see stuff, you hear stuff. Everything is in separate thought being accounted for now with the interstate, job and finance, cost fees on finance. That, that's what's being done. Right. I have somebody that is a, a certified accountant look at the look at the books, and her assessment of it is that the books aren't being kept in an accurate way. And I want to know if, I, and I know Marla's doing the best job she does that she, you know she's a, a I'm sure a good employee. But do we need to get a certified accountant into the office to work with her? Set up a budget in each in each department and run this community the way that most businesses are. We're looking at every bit of that, every okay. aspect of it. All right, John, would you like to add to that? Well, we are audited each year. Well, yeah, but an audit isn't isn't running the books the way. I, I do understand that, but at least it gives you some assurance that accounting yeah, principles look, are being we've applied. At it. We've, we've, that. That. We've, we've got multiple people, including John, that's been on recently got on this meeting. Yeah, three, four months. We're starting to improve and things and looking yeah. at things. Okay. And, and, and we realize that we're issue. Yeah. But would it, be, would it be helpful to get a, a, a certified accountant or somebody, even if, if it's somebody in this community that would be um, offer their services to work with, you know, the, the uh, board or the office and get a good budget um, together? I mean, that's what the volunteers do. I, mean, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, somebody working with Marla. Again, Julie, we're on your side. We're, 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 we're volunteers. We're residents just like you. I, I it's in our best that's interest. why I'm asking the question. It's, it's in our best interest not to let the ship sink in. Right. right. And we're working hard towards well, that goal. We're also putting them on the website. Very confident finance people that do have background in that are helping the board. I mean, putting it on, on available on the website because when when all this went down, you try to go out and look at budgets and audits, and it's random. This random year, and then a random budget, and then a random month thing, and it, it's not consistent at all. I mean, this should be consistent and transparent. Anything you need to know, you can get the information will be provided to you. If it, what you see in the echoes isn't sufficient for you, make an appointment, come down, and you'll be shown anything you need to see. No one's hiding anything. We're above board, going forward, everything is split up, separate pots. We don't have anything to hide us. So it's that simple. If you got questions, ask them, come to the office. I understand, it's in the echoes, but I'm not saving monthly newsletters. We have a, we have a, we have a website, and that website has a, a place that you're supposed to go to, and it says, here you will find the budgets, here you will find the audits, and they're not there. So yeah, they have it. Yeah, they're, they're very spread. You go into financial reports under POA and you get every day. Check it out. It's it's not not no, they're not. No, they're not. Yes, sir. The main lot number is 1475 7 Got a question. Um, I run a major or as one of the heads of a major corporation. Sometimes bad decisions got to be made. When we're losing money, it requires money on and instead of the board cut back on the dollar. But what's taking place right now with money being down, is there any cutback that you guys are making? Because I see in the salary, there's outrageous salaries going on here. And from what I'm seeing, you're asking me to fork out $300. But nobody's giving up anything. And free insurance. Yeah, we're going to say free insurance. Oh, yeah. So I'm, say free I'm insurance. not worried about so the free insurance. Free insurance. The salaries that we're paying are they free insurance. They pay a portion of their, of their free insurance. Yeah. Employees do. 
employees, the employees are not getting free insurance. They pay their portion like every other employer has their employees pay a portion. That wasn't the discussion I got. I understand. But she was in the background okay. shading that. So I'll get to one of that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Make yeah, the decision. Yeah, right. I'm going to stand up because I'm freezing. I <laughs> no, I'm just Otherwise, I'll be sure. So, one of the first things we did, we asked Dave when you talk description was every display that we have. Can you speak up, please? Uh, yeah, I'll read and come close. Okay. But we did ask Dave, and he did provide the job description of every employee that we have. Okay. Now, this board, I've been on. Three months, done us fairly. You know, people have been here before, but it's a lot to get caught up with. What does this person do? The job description, job description says this, this, and this. Well, how many are we doing? And what else? You know, that's a lot to go through, folks. And, and what I would say is, do get it. Well, we need your help. There's a lot of documentation. There's a lot of stuff there. And what we don't want to do is is just go making statements. Well, we've got too many people. We're going to lay off three people, right? Because then people start looking for another job. And you might still want them. You might want them for something else. You might actually need them. So we're trying to not make any rash judgments on that. On the healthcare thing, 2023 was a pretty high year. Okay, one of the things we looked at financially, did a ton of work on this. We saw a bunch of proposals on the healthcare. 2024 is going to be cheaper. Is it as cheap as we want? No. We have set the stage that that's probably not going to be the package that we have next year. We don't know what the package is going to be, but we don't think it's going to be that. We understand that's a lot. As I work for a company that provides group benefits, I'm an executive officer. My benefits package is not that good. We get it. Okay. And we are looking at this stuff, but it takes time for all volunteers, the finance committees, volunteer. Yes, we need any volunteer with that expertise to help. Please do. And I'll say this too. If you feel like you're not getting a response from a committee, they're ignoring you, and you're not in the club or whatever, whatever, make an appointment with the board at that executive session and come and let us know these things. But the idea is yes, we're interested in the proposals. You know, we are interested in these things, but we're volunteers. We are dealing with a million things on this stuff. And I do apologize that we can't just take every subject every minute of every day when we want to talk about it. But we do want to hear you. We really ask you to follow that process. We are looking at this stuff, and we do very much need your help. And that's all I have to say. So the answer is oh, no consent. You're asking we're me still to pay three hundred dollars. We're still with no. no. So if I got to pay three hundred dollars, somebody who can have a consent because I'm paying to pay these outrageous wages that you guys pay. It's all there's a lot of matter of opinion on what an outrageous wage is. Mm -hmm. Sir, I got 200 people in me and a union shop. I know not an outrageous wage. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure who you're talking about. I'd love to hear what you think that job I'd is. I'd love to talk to you about it. Please, <laughs> please make an appointment with us and talk to us. Go to the finance committee. We want to hear that because, you know, not all of us have all 200 people. You know, people like me, you have that expertise. We want to hear it. Thank you. If I can just add something to what you, you said, Please. Donna, correct me if I'm wrong, but when we looked at the wages, just a little background, when I took over as board president, what was routine at that time was that every year, Mr. Keller penciled in a 6% increase for employees. Now, I, wow. of course, uh, wow. I've seen the value of my IRA go down. down. I'm old enough now to get Social Security. I said, this is bad front. You know what? And so we eliminated that and we paid it to the cost of living. But then Donna and I reached out to other government agencies here. We weren't looking You're not at government agencies. No, well, in a You're sense, we are. Not a no, well, sir, hear me out. We are not a private industry and in that you are a union shop that makes something to sell to someone. This is the government of a private community. You may disagree with me, if maybe you wish, and that's fine. But we reached out to Greendale, to Lawrenceburg, to Aurora. What are they paying people in comparable positions? We are not that far off. Those are government agencies. You are not a government agency. I also, as of last yes. year, we also did go to private companies. We did. When we were benchmarking, we yes, did, what they were giving we is increases. So we do I mean, try to do our due, due diligence when it comes. And you have to remember, 
apples to apples sometimes is difficult to do when you when you look at how are they with people what, what are you responsible for versus what but, but we did reach out to private companies like and i've got control into everything else i know what you think okay. again grant i would love to sit down with grant uh, we can't say that this is the government agency, or it's not. You know? But, but yeah, they reached yeah. out to Deer Park County, which I worked for up until a month ago. The the clerk of courts makes fifty nine thousand dollars a year and been in there twenty years. The you know I, I work with the, the first level deputy in the in the, uh, the courts of, uh, the, in the clerk's office who had been there eighteen years and she made thirty nine thousand dollars a year. So and that's all public. And, and that's all public. So I'm not sharing anything. It's all public record. You got to do that. So. You know, you're not benchmarking against Dearborn County, and if anybody's making more than 40 grand a year, so. And they are. <laughs> okay. All right. Not a motion for adjournment, please. I'm Thank you all.